Let's quickly, uh, if we may, turn to the omnibus uh, legislation, the Friday midnight deadline on shutting down the government, uh, the omnibus bill uh, moving now. Uh, and do you have time to, if you can reach agreement on its contents, do you have time to, uh, to, to beat that deadline? Well, Lou, I mean, I think something probably will pass before that deadline, but I don't know that it's going to be a very good product. And how can we keep finding ourselves in these situations where you have a massive bill put together behind closed doors? I can tell you, guys like me who are just rank and file members, we don't have any concept of what's in this thing. It's all being done behind closed doors. And so it'll be unveiled maybe tonight. We're going to have to go through, read it. We're going to have to calculate how much money is being spent. It's just not the way uh, to do business. Why doesn't and somebody tell Speaker Ryan to go to hell? I mean, he, this is an embarrassment. He, is, he represents only the, the, the U.S. multinational interest on K Street. He doesn't represent Republican thinking. He's not a conservative. He is a, in my judgment, one of the most erratic people we've ever seen in the speakership. Well, here's the problem with these omnibus bills. And, you know, once these things start getting off the ground, it really does empower K Street because they want to, yeah, they view it as a Christmas tree. They want to put whatever they can, stuff it in there, knowing that this vehicle's, the train's leaving the station. So if they can hitch their wagons to this thing, well, then they're going to be able to do it. That's why you need to actually do budgets, do individual appropriations bills. You know, and I think that the House, we've actually done that last year. We passed the yes. appropriations bills. The Senate has not passed a single standalone appropriation bill. I think in like six or eight years. Um, and so uh, whatever criticism of the House, and there's definitely fair criticism there, you know, the U.S. Senate has proven itself to be incapable of doing the core function of the Congress, which is to pass these appropriations bills in a transparent and open way so that the American people know how their money's being spent and we're doing what needs to be done. Um, and and it, the, the problem is this is like Groundhog Day, same thing over and over again. Yeah. We got to call a different play at some point uh, to try to get some better results. Results. Yeah, well, better results for whom? Uh, you know, Ryan is serving his master for the taxpayer. For uh, the taxpayer, and here's the oh, thing. No, that, no, no, no. Ryan's Ryan's master, not the taxpayers. They just pay the bills. Uh, let's be clear. It is the business roundtable. It is the Chamber of Commerce. It is K Street. He sold out a long time ago. He sold out the conference. He sold out the Republican Party. He sold out this president, and he would sell out his mother based on his record of 20 years and such little accomplishment and absolute favor for all of his dearest friends who write big checks. Well, so here's the here's what I would say I say Lou about the Senate though is that you know they say oh we need 60 votes. Well, actually no, you need 50 votes. It's only 60 if they mount a filibuster. Make Schumer get up there and filibuster. He's going to be able to say, I'm shutting down the government. I'm not even allowing a vote on a military spending bill or something or funding our VA. Yeah. Um, we've never called his bluff on that, though. And so they basically get away with saying, I'm going to threaten a filibuster. Therefore, you got to do a big omnibus bill. And then I get all the pork that I want. So it's.